This video illustrates the installation of an intercell or intracell connection on a monoblock or individual cell in a battery. When the batteries come from the factory, they may have a coating of no oxide on their posts. That coating should be completely cleaned off the posts and the posts should also be neutralized to ensure that there's no residual acid left from the factory that may cause corrosion once this battery has been installed. Once that's done, the entire post is coated with a corrosion inhibiting compound. All the lead surfaces of the post have a corrosion compound applied to them. We put this on now before we clean the oxide off because this will minimize the amount of lead dust that occurs when we clean the contact surfaces. So the contact surfaces are clean. In this case, we will clean both sides of the post because there are two inner cell connectors that are installed here, one on either side of the post. So both sets of contact areas need to be clean. If there was only one inner cell connector, you would only clean the one side of the post, that is the contact area against the inner cells. Once that has been done, we would wipe off the no oxide on the surface of the post where you've just cleaned the oxide layer off and apply another thin coat of no oxide or corrosion inhibitor to the post surfaces, contact surfaces themselves. Once this is done, we can install the inner cell connectors which have been previously cleaned and coated with a corrosion inhibiting compound. So the connectors are installed, one on either side of the post, and the hardware is installed. The hardware is a bolt, a nut, two flat washers, and in this case a lock washer, although not all battery manufacturers supply lock washers with their connections. Always remember to keep the rounded side of the washer against the inner cell connector or against the lead. The sharp side of the connector should all the sharp side of the washer rather should always be away from the lead or away from the inner cell connector. We now use a torque wrench and another wrench for counter torque, making sure that the tools are insulated. And we previously set the torque on this wrench for the required torque by this particular manufacturer. And we will torque the inner cell connections. Generally, we put the torque wrench on the nut side of the connection and then torque the nut side. Once this is done, this completes the connection and this process should be repeated as many times as necessary to install in all the inner cell connectors and the same procedure should be followed to install terminal details or terminal plates. If the inner cell connection has only one inner cell connector to be installed, then there may be a requirement to have a spacer or a square washer on the opposite side to prevent damage to the lead post when the connection is torqued. The spacer has already been coated with corrosion inhibiting compound, but because the spacer is not part of the conduction path, there is no need to remove any oxidation from the spacer itself. The second connection is made again with the spacer. And again, remember that the rounded edge of the washer goes against the lead or against the connectors or the spacer. The sharp side of the washer always faces away from the connection. Once those are in place, we take our torque wrench and our other wrench for counter torque and with the torque wrench on the nut side, torque the connections again until we get to the required torque value. This completes that connection for a single inner cell connector with spacers on the opposite side of the post. This is also the same configuration that's used if you have a single terminal detail. You would need spacers, whether they be single hole or two hole spacers on the opposite side of the post, depending on the, the terminal detail type. Once all the inner cell connections have been installed and the terminal details and cables, 
The resistance of every connection must be measured with a microohmmeter to ensure a low resistance conduction path of the battery. This is done using a microohmmeter. The microohmmeter is turned on and the test probes are placed on the posts themselves because you want to measure the contact resistance of the connection. In this case, we see that the connection resistance is about 15 microohms, which agrees well with the calculations we've made as to the baseline resistance for this connection. If the connection resistance was too high, the first option is to retorque the connection and retest it. If the connection resistance remains high, then the connection must be disassembled, cleaned again, reassembled, and the connection resistance measured until the connection resistance is satisfactory.